um, until August. Yeah. Yeah. Two months. Yeah, there are. But, I mean, I'm working on the way back. Yeah, on the way back. Yeah, it's just more like in some of these areas, like rushing, like block that down there, that little junction. Oh, no, you can't. No, I think pretty much everybody's here. Speak instead. So I'm, I'm honored and privileged to do that. My name is Phil McIntyre Paul, and I'm with the Shoe Shop Trail Alliance. And uh, I'm here, uh, Joan Mitchell, who is part of our board, uh, is here, and she's been helping serve some lunch. Thanks of. Uh, thanks to Tim Hortons, who is our, our official trail building lunch sponsor. We had a trail day yesterday. We had lunch uh, left over and said, hey, guess what? We'll bring it. We've got another event that we could uh, use lunch at. So they were excited for us to do that. So if you didn't have a sandwich, feel free to grab one afterwards. Um, uh, we've got a number of people to thank and a few people to acknowledge and invite to speak uh, uh, today before you walk. So again, bear with me because I know this is not what you usually do when you start. You get out of the car and start walking. It's getting away from people, right? So, uh, so we'll we'll have at some time there. You'll notice the trail official trail uh, flagging ribbon across the uh, start of the walk, and uh, um, uh, CSRD Area F Director Dennis Delisle will be officially. Uh, cutting the ribbon, and we've actually brought uh, appropriate uh, cutting implements. And if we're lucky, he'll keep this and prune as he goes a little bit. And we've uh, we brought him some official uh, Shoe Shop Trail Crew gloves to, to do the deed with. So, and we'll get a few of our guests to, to join us. I think I saw at least uh, one other director here. Uh, I, Ted, I see you hiding in the back. Thanks for joining us. Um, so I'll go through and we'll introduce uh, folks as they come. Um, Dennis, I'm not sure if uh, Chief Arnoux or if anyone from uh, uh, Little Shoe Shop uh, Band was able to join us. Uh, Dennis is right behind me coming up the trail. Ah, uh, there's Dennis there. I'm, ta I'm, talking, to, I'm talking to myself. So. <laughs> I don't think they're here. So. Okay, okay, excellent. As Dennis uh, approaches. So, uh, so I will then uh, acknowledge um, uh, that we stand on Shushwap territory. Uh, we've worked closely with the bands of uh, the uh, Shushwap Lakes Division, Adams Lake, Nisconleth, Splatseen, and Little Shushwap Indian Band. Uh, they were instrumental in uh, reviewing the site, coming and walking it, uh, doing the archaeological reviews uh, with Darren and CSRD Parks and, uh, and assure, ensuring that we weren't uh, entering uh, sensitive or culturally significant areas. At the same time, all of this territory is within Shushwap territory, so we walk with respect and we walk acknowledging the First Peoples uh, uh, and the First Nations of this place. So uh, I start with that and, uh, and a welcome. And if you do have a chance to go and speak with, uh, with Chief Arnous or uh, Councillor Tess Toma or Andreas or any of the, the folks at the Little Shusha Band, please uh, acknowledge uh, uh, their, uh, their role in this and uh, how valuable this is. Before we turn this over to Dennis and, uh, and, and actually officially cut the ribbon, uh, Roger, uh, any uh, final words for us? Um, I'm turning to Roger Zink for the, the last word as we walk and enjoy this place, which, uh, which probably of anyone here, uh, I would say it's fair to say, Roger, you've probably spent the most time in this, in this place and understand uh, the importance. All I can say is when they come up here, if they find a gate closed, close it behind them, and if they find it open, leave it open. <laughs> Except for the ones oh. here in the forest. Close those. <laughs> they, should be they should be closed. All right, this is your photo moment. So these gloves, I, I need the snippers back because the other ones are here. But the gloves are Dennis's to keep, and we're, we'll hope to see you. So there's a pair of gloves. Right? Okay. Now we're gonna we're gonna pass the uh, snippers over to. Uh, is he gonna do this side? Or is he gonna do it on? Which side do you want him? Oh, what, how about both sides? Do a well, photo up right here, here with the crowd behind. Yeah, you. with the table. Um, as Dennis is getting himself geared up here for this, um, uh, uh, Jim has just asked me to let you know the uh, Shushwap watershed map uh, is over on the side. They're actually available if you don't have a copy, as well as the songs for the Shushwap uh, um, CD. And here's the news. Today, they're free. So if you don't have a copy, and those of you who paid for a copy know that you are supporting a great thing. For those of you who don't have a copy, it's your chance, and it's a great CD of music celebrating the shoe shop, supporting the watershed project. If you don't have the watershed map, pick it up, because it really, really exposes the place that we live in, and so uh, acknowledging the watershed uh, project for that. So, Anything else, Jim? 
Yeah. I'm going to turn it over to Dennis. Tell people what we're going to do up there, though. Like, we're going to hike and then we're going to Oh, okay. All right. So, you want to know about what we're going to do? I keep getting this pinching on the backside here. And I'm lucky, lucky if it's a pinch. So, uh, here's, the, here's the logistics of the walk. And again, we knew that it would be a fairly large group, so it needs to be a fairly self directed walk. Um, the two parts of the walk, you've got the Scotch Creek Lookout, which is the trail that's been built, and it's a very rustic trail. It's what we call a Type 4. Uh, it's not, in some spots, not down to mineral. It's uneven, uh, and it really demands that you don't rush. David Wagner writes, stand still. The forest will find you. You've got to let it know, uh, let it find you. You've got to stand still. So this is a trail that won't rush it. Uh, so it wants you to look where you're walking. Uh, it also wants you to pay attention to what's around you. And so you're going to enter, uh, you're going to go through regrowth forest, and then you're going to enter the old growth forest, some spectacular old uh, fir trees in there. Make sure you look up, make sure you look around. Uh, we're going to suggest that when you come to the junction, that you go to the lower uh, loop uh, entry first. And so you actually go to the left and do the loop in a clockwise loop, and that'll bring you to the, the lookout. There is a junction post marker that says Hlina uh, route. And for those of you who are interested and feel comfortable walking off trail, we've brushed the larger route, the larger Fina loop, and it's blazed and there's flagging along the way, but it is very, very minimally marked. So you need to be comfortable uh, off trail and, and self-guiding. There is another lookout about, a cl about uh, 500 meters along, and I know Jim is going to go down to that lookout, and it's fairly, fairly good walking. Uh, you just need to pay attention to where you're going and be with a group. So, Jim, you're going to go with a group there. So, Jim will wait, and anyone who wants to go to that lookout, it's about another 15 minutes there. And then it's another. That's one. It really is spectacular, and that's one we hope to get sort of new trail to. For those of you who feel comfortable walking on marked, signed trail, we suggest you not go that way, uh, that you actually loop back and follow the, the signs back to the car here. The first part of the trail is on the, the old uh, forestry road, and then you'll find rocks, and then it transfers to a beautiful grassy lane. That's where uh, Roger's cattle like to feel, feed, feed, so that's where forage, any grass forage, that's where we're asking folks to just walk and, and protect the forage. And then watch for the root uh, junction markers as you go, and they'll guide you on the trail, okay? If anyone is thinking, yeah, I like backcountry, off-road, wilderness loops, and I'd like to try the big loop, uh, talk to either Jim or myself um, or Darren, anyone who knows it, and we'll kind of give you a general direction. The map here does give you a general idea of where that route is. Uh, as long as you keep looking for those blazes and follow the obvious uh, um, uh, track route, it'll bring you around and you'll regroup with the road here and it'll bring you back down and loop back up to here with, uh, with your car. So for those of you who are here for a, a bit more of an adventure, uh, we invite you to do that, but you're definitely on your own and uh, do so at your own risk. Anything else? Uh, yeah. Excellent. We, we are working on a map. Uh, the, the signs are, you'll see the signs are laminated. So we put up, the, this is what they'll look like, but they're temporary right now. We want to get feedback from you. So if you do this and you go, well, that didn't really make sense, and we get feedback, then we know we can do some changes. The metal plates will go up in a few weeks once we've got feedback from you. And what a great group to test it, right? Um, the maps we're working on, and so they should get posted shortly. I know Dennis is hoping to send one out. And it'll be a two-sided, one side will have route description and direction to here, the other side will have this map on it. So, so watch the shoeshoptrails.com website, the CSRD Parks website, and Dennis is incredible at sending out an email with a blast, so you watch for that as well. So, Any other questions before we go? Yeah, are you running for office? <laughs> so are you running for office? <laughs> <laughs> I know Dennis is. <laughs> Yeah, that's just what you need. I've watched Dennis and you, Ted. I know what it's about. Um, there was a question about pet owners. Mm -hmm. No, just some reminders. Housekeeping with people with animals. Well, those of you who did bring pets, uh, we, you, we need you to keep them on, on leash. And also, please know that there are folks here who are, in large groups, our experience has been that there's often lots of folks, kids, who are quite uncomfortable with dogs. Um, when we lead uh, groups ourselves, we often uh, have to invite folks to leave dogs at home because they're, they're, it's hard to, to kind of manage a group. 
So those of you who do have dogs, please keep them on leash and keep them keep them close, and uh, and we should do just fine. And so far, there haven't been any of those kind of darking barking uh, sort of uh, fests that happen. That uh, that, uh, that happen. Please stay on the trail. You're you're entering an old growth area and sensitive habitat. And we are asking that the trail is about keeping you on a route and keeping you focused. When you come to the, the viewpoints, there are steep cliff uh, drops, and so folks need to wait and maybe take turns going down. Those of you with kids uh, and with dogs, uh, they're steep, and so you need to make sure that you're hanging on to folks and that you're managing closely. They're not fenced viewpoints, they're rustic wilderness viewpoints, so safety is important. So. <laughs> Anything else? All right. Here we are already. Woo! All right. Housekeeping's out of the way. Three, two, one. Recycling over here for those of you who have stuff. In the spirit of cooperation, Phil. Oh, oh, that doesn't sound, where's Jackie? You, you, oh, come on. Darren? Oh, let's go. Oh, let's go. Four, three, two, one. No, if we can ten, nine. All right, let's walk. Okay. Thanks, the thanks everyone. Um, on the table. Right there. Oh, when we go now, we've got our grandma's in here. Thanks. Pardon me? Which trail are we going to follow? Um, we should. Yeah, yeah. Look out. Oh, no, no. Yes. Oh, why not? Are you going to see the long? She comes like you can me all the time. Are you going to try to have a group? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Already, the woodpeckers and the bugs, they'll eat the bark. You don't need to rip it off, okay? Okay. Did you make Carmen? Well, we did decide one another. I'm Carmen. Make the connection. Because Celia is at the nature house. Yes. Yeah. 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 So I'm going to be doing some coordination of the Rousey Blues Hikes. Yeah, I got my BC. Parts 100. Parts 100. And so we are going to be doing interpretive guided hikes. By the way, you don't have to pause. With the light and like 29. And have you got some pamphlets or something? We will. Oh, and I'll be bringing yeah, yeah, bring yeah. them for you. The maps and that mm. poster. I don't know if you're doing a poster. That's one thing I wasn't sure. Have you seen a poster? Uh, there will be one. Okay. 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 Bring me some. Yeah, Diana, give her a little bit. Are you okay? So far, so I fell and pushed that tree over. Oh, did you? I wanted to go like that last. All right. We'll blame it on camera. Okay, so we're going to go to the viewpoint, Jim. I knew her daughter, but the donkey refuge and stuff. Yeah, of course, I think. Well, we lived eight years here um, with our three kids. Through eight winters and everything. And this night, I teach at North Shore Elementary School. And you're driving that road. But we don't live there anymore. We haven't lived here for six years, oh, and our road has deteriorated. Brad and I used to look after it really well when we lived here. Because it's quite potholy and stuff. Well, that's when, when, when I left. Brad's in the greenhouse right now, drywalling the upstairs. But his last words were to talk to you about the three of us were considering um, hiring 